What is going on? This is episode 2 of the beat making pre-production process. On this channel we've always gone over other aspects of music but we've rarely touched on the process leading up to beat making. And what I've decided to do is to interview other musicians in the Toronto area about their process. In this episode we have Slow Pitch Sound, an incredible musician that uses turntablism and production to create outstanding soundscapes in music. I highly suggest you check out his music and follow him on all the social media. And you can find that info in the description box below. This video was made with the help of my supporters on Patreon. Much respect to them for the continued support. And with that, let's get on to the interview. So my music production process, um, it starts out different than most might think. And um, it really goes down to practice is my first thing. So um, I spent a lot of time just kind of honing in on my skills. Uh, the turntable is a, a big part of both my live uh, performance and also my uh, music production in the studio. So I spend a lot of time really staying sharp on the turntable, um, learning it inside out, you know, uh, going as deep as I can with it. Um, and it's something I really believe strongly in. It's like taking that time, um, not being afraid of time, really, you know. If you want to get something, something good out, you have to like really take time to, to learn the tools, learn the instruments, and it's just amazing how much it can open up and, and inspire you. So practice is one big thing. Um, the other thing I, I really like to do is isolate myself. Um, and it's, it's, this is kind of a weird one, you know, because a lot of people think, you know, when you make music that you, all you do is just listen to other music but I find it actually one of the hardest questions to, to answer, you know, when it comes to what do I listen to? Um, it's hard because I spend a lot of time actually not listening to anything um, other than, well, let's just say musically. Um, I just kind of listen to my environment a lot. Get outside, you know, taking walks, going into nature. Um, you know, it's amazing what you'll find uh, out there just from your environment, just being open, taking walks, you know, in the woods. Uh, out in this bustling city, on the beach, whatever. Um, I try to do that a lot so that it allows me to basically cleanse. It's like a cleanser. Uh, I don't really like getting influenced by, you know, whatever's kind of happening in the mainstream, uh, whatever's on the pop charts or whatever. I just kind of avoid all of that so I can have um, a pure mind going in. And really, it helps me to find my sound, find myself. And, and be comfortable with the sounds that I'm playing with. So I definitely stress that. Get out, isolate a little bit, you know, don't get too caught up with things. Um, find examples in nature, you know. Uh, it, I find it helpful for when it comes to mixing my tracks to listen around, see how things sound when they're far away. How does it sound on the right, the left, you know, these kind of things. Um, and I apply it to my work. Uh, the other thing there is um, kind of going back to practice. Even creativity is something that you can like practice, right? Like just opening up your mind. So for myself, doing those walks, going in the woods and things like that, um, I, I try to imagine if I'm like, what would it be like to be a leaf? You know, what does a leaf hear and see? Uh, what is a little animal going across? Like, what are they thinking? Like just, just these, it's almost like, um, you know, just taking a notebook, which I like doing as well too, and just jotting things down, flipping things upside down, pictures and just, help to tweak your imagination a bit. I like doing that a lot and this is sort of my process before I even get into the studio just to kind of get a clear uh, palette in my head. So now when it comes to getting into the studio sort of an extension of what I was saying you know about exploring preparing your mind and getting a clear head um, I like to go into the studio with that same mentality and I start off with a clean studio. I, I have to start working that way just tidying up, um, it helps, you know. Um, I remember when I started out some years ago producing, I would have situations where, you know, a, a wire is not plugged in right or uh, the place is messy. And by the time I get down into working, my train of thought is just gone, you know. So I just kind of use that moment to get prepped, clear head, make sure everything is in order, pencils are sharpened, all these kind of things. Um, and then I go into work. And how I usually start off is by jamming, you know, so I really start off with just improvising, uh, using my skills on the turntable with scratch, 
um, some might know it as turntablism. And um, I just play around and manipulate sounds um, and start looping things. And as soon as I find something that makes me move a certain way, I know I've got it, you know? Um, and it's about trust. You start to develop a trust after a while of when your body starts moving, trust it, right? Don't worry about what anyone else has to say. Um, and to add to that, I don't like uh, putting myself in a box. Um, I heard someone say this before and it, it sounded pretty cool. I think it was um, an MC um, Odyssey or Odyssey, some will call him. But he said, uh, I don't mind boxes. Just put me in as many boxes as you can. That's kind of what I'm like. I don't think about a genre when I'm working because I find it sort of closes things up for me. Um, I just want to be free and go with where my body's telling me to go what the sample's telling me to do, and, and just sort of, it's like an open, free-form sort of uh, initial creation process. Um, after that, I would say another thing in the studio, um, trying to think. Yeah, those are, that's, that's like my main thing right there. It's really just stay open-minded. Um, don't just, my approach is anyways, like just, staying open and just letting the samples sort of guide me let my body sort of tell me like oh i'm starting to like shake my hips a bit or my shoulders it's like let me work with that and keep going and then whatever it turns out i let everyone else name it what it is you know what i mean but for me stay open-minded and just keep pushing forward yeah. all right so i've done all that work i've played around and everything now when i'm going into more details with my sound uh the sky's the limit, really. Like uh, All sounds work for me. Um, I just kind of think of it like if you close your eyes you're gonna, and you hear something, it's, it's usable, right? It's a sound. You can bend it, you can tweak it, you know. Um, something that's really important and I also practice as well um, is three important things. Volume, um, panning, and EQing, equalizing. Those are like my favorite things. So before I even touch filters or plugins and things like that. I actually try to really avoid using a bunch of plugins and see how much work I could get done just with those three things. Volume, you can become a master. You know, it's like, it's the same thing I said, you know, I, I think when you stick with something for a long time, you'd be surprised about how much things you can get out of it. I believe that with just those simple three things. With volume, you can get a lot of work done. With panning, you can get a lot of work done and EQing. So if you have that, and when I feel like I'm, I'm good with that, then everything else is just like tiny spice on top. Um, so yeah, it's open. I'll, I'll, I'll use field recordings, um, uh, pretty much whatever. Uh, I, like doing ch I like challenging myself as well, where I'll just you know, grab a random sound and see how far I can get with it. And the more I do that, the more comfortable I feel to use so sounds that some might say, oh, that's a weird thing. But if you can kind of like crush that and just like nothing is weird, everything is open game. Um, like I said, isolate, you know, when I do all that stuff, then it just gives me more confidence to go even further, you know. So, uh, yeah, when it comes to that, it's just really about getting the sounds just right for the project um, that's in front. And uh, usually, like I said, the samples and how the groove is going will also help a lot too if I stay open to that. So what ends up happening is rather than me just physically making the beat solely me, it ends up becoming this weird partnership of I'm listening to what the beat is telling me to do or whatever the production is telling me to do. And then we're sort of communicating back and forth in a way like that. So as you can see, another fresh perspective on the steps leading up to music making. And my hope is that you can gather little bits and pieces from each of these interviews to put together something that works for you or to inspire a work process of your own. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked and learned something today, subscribe to us here on YouTube. I will catch you on the next one. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Peace.